So the rule of triangle is a well-known object of constant uh, width and it's this blue thing here and it's, uh, it comprises three sectors of three individual circles whose centers are located on an equilateral, on the vertices of an equilateral triangle. Now I'm not so interested in the circles themselves, I'm more interested in the, the shape of the rule of triangle and I'm actually going to play around with the antipodal curve with respect to a point M of this shape. So uh, what's the antipodal curve? Let's choose a point M, also known as the uh, negative pedal curve, anywhere on the boundary of this rouleau, right? So I can parameterize M and place it anywhere. The center of the rouleau is shown here uh, by letter O. And I'm going to choose a point P on the boundary of the rouleau, which I can also place anywhere, right? Now let's draw P minus M. Let's draw P minus M. So it's the segment connecting P and M. And the perpendicular passing through P, that is perpendicular to P uh, minus M. So I have this family of lines, okay? And I can compute the envelope of this family of lines with respect to a fixed point M on the rouleau for all points P of T on the rouleau. So what does this envelope look like? This envelope is actually a quite amazing object. It's a star-shaped thing of sorts, right? It only actually has two segments that are continuous. Then it has some discontinuous jumps. So uh, let's analyze this thing, okay? So first of all, let's place Sam a little closer to the middle of that sector over there so that I get a neatly separated set of two curves. Uh, and perhaps, <coughs> uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and place P near M, first of all, and let's investigate what this line is doing if P lies on the same sector on the same side of the rule of triangle as M, okay? So first of all, let's exp expand this a little bit. It looks like as I'm doing this, okay, uh, the envelope is actually stuck at this point over here. It's an isolated uh, vertex of the envelope. Uh, and why is that? Let's go back to the circles that define the rule of, and you're going to see that there's a very interesting phenomenon here. If I connect M to the opposite vertex on the rouleau, like so, okay, this becomes a diameter of this generating circle on which this sector is contained. Now, as I slide P on the sector, okay, as I slide P on the sector, I create a family of right angle triangles, right? So this is a very uh, well-known property. I'm moving uh, a point P along an arc, and uh, uh, with respect to the diameter, I have a set of uh, right triangles, so this angle here is always 90 degrees, and the other vertex of this triangle is going to be on the on the antip antipode of M with respect to the center of that circle. So for P is on this arc, okay, for P is on this arc, the envelope is simply that point. That's pretty neat. Okay, so let's erase this diameter, let's erase the circles, let's bring the rule low, uh, let's zoom in on the rule low a bit, and now let's escape this location which P is on this sector, let's place P on a different sector. So let's place P on this other sector, on this other side of the rule low. Now you can see here that the uh, family of perpendicular lines is now tangent to a curve, a different curve, which is this uh, purple segment here, this curved segment, right? And we actually at this point don't know what the nature of this curve is, if this is also a circular arc, or if this is a curve of higher order, an ellipse, we have to investigate that. But uh, apparently, and you can see here that the instantaneous envelope, or the instantaneous point of tangency of, of this perpendicular to P minus M, lies over here, and I'm actually sweeping when P is on this part of the rouleau, this other branch of the negative pedal curve or of the antipodal curve, right? Now here's something very interesting. We also don't know the nature of it. When I get when P of T gets to this um, cusp of the rouleau itself to this vertex, this envelope is going to jump from this branch to the other branch. And when this jump happens, the uh, rouleau vertex is going to be collinear with the two cusps. So Look at what happens as I cross, as PT crosses the rule of vertex, my point of tangency is going to sweep to here all the way to this cusp 
and it's going to jump to this other branch of the negative pedal curve such that these three points are collinear. We also don't know yet why this happens. This is quite interesting. So I jump over there. Okay, so if I actually draw these two cusps, then I can actually light up the cusps. So I have a cusp here shown green and another cusp there shown green. These three, these two cusps are collinear with this vertex of the rouleau. And we don't understand this why. We don't understand why this is yet. All right, so I have this interesting phenomenon. And then, of course, I have the sort of the mirror image. My envelope is going to sweep this other branch of the, of the complete uh, rouleau uh, envelope, right, with respect to M. Now, uh, I'm actually having some numeric issues here. Disregard this sort of incomplete purple segment here. Of course, when I get to this particular cusp, I'm going to jump back again to that uh, outlying uh, vertex. Uh, with the right triangle phenomenon, right? So as soon as P of T crosses over to this branch, right, I'm going to jump over to this point over here. Okay, so there you have at least a verbal description of this two-branched envelope with five cusps, right? So here's one of the cusps down here, which happens when P of T is on this uh, side of the rouleau. Here's another cusp. Uh, sorry, here's another branch of the envelope when P of T lies on this side of the rouleau. So if I move P of T to this side of the rouleau, I'm going to be lying on this branch. And then as soon as I go over to the other side, I'm going to jump from this cusp to this other cusp, collinear with this cusp of the, uh, or this vertex of the rouleau, and then I continue on on this other branch. So as I move P around, it crosses over, and I continue on continue. I can go back and sweep the same motion back, jump over, jump over, and jump over. Okay, so this is all nice. This is a first, uh, say, pass at the description of what this negative pedal curve of the rouleau might look like. Now, a very pleasing thing happens. Uh, first of all, you're noticing that there's uh, five cusps, right? I have this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, uh, when you think of five points distributed in space, you can think of the conic that passes through all of them. So I'm drawing this conic here. I'm calculating it and I'm drawing it. In this particular configuration, and now the position of P is uh, immaterial, right? So I can clean it up a little bit. Here's the conic, this green, in this case is an ellipse, that passes through the five cusps uh, of the envelope of the rouleau uh, triangle with respect to M, right? So if I move M around, I'm going to get a different. Uh, conic. Okay, now these conics can become, um, depending on the configuration, if M is pretty close to uh, one of the two sides of this particular rule of side, and we don't know where the transition happens, but there's a transition. So let's place M over here. There's a transition. At some point, this ellipse becomes a uh, hyperbola. Right now, while the sky is a hel an ellipse, we can actually see that there's something very interesting happening. The focus of this family of ellipses is M, and the major axis of this family of ellipses always passes through the center of uh, the Rouleau triangle. Now, you know, we didn't impose these constraints at all when we said, okay, find me a conic that passes through the five cusps. So we, again, we don't know the reasons why this is happening, but this is a nice harmony that we, someone or us could attempt to prove. If you want to help, please go ahead. Um, yes. So, yeah, and the same thing is verified if the conic is a um, hyperbola. You can see that one of the foci of the hyperbola lies here and the other one lies there, but one of the foci is... Uh, the, the the point M and not shown here is the axis of symmetry of this uh, hyperbola, but this axis of symmetry uh, or the axes of of this hyperbola will also uh, lie on um, uh, will also pass through the center of the rouleau. Okay, all right. So this is the first part. Now let's talk about a second set of phenomena. Let's go ahead and turn off the envelope. Let's turn off the cusps and the envelope.
and the ellipse. Okay, now let's investigate something else. Let's investigate uh, billiard uh, trajectories inside of this closed shape. Uh, so let's expand this guy to 1.5, and I'm going to fire off, say, three lines, and I'm going to be firing them off uh, with respect to P. So let's light up P again. So here's P. What do I mean by firing off a billiard trajectory? I want to um, make sure that wherever P is, right, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reflecting a ray from M to P about the normal at P shown here by this arrow, right? So if I, if I represent, say, 10 rays, and I continue this process, I'm going to continue this process. I go first ray, second ray, third ray, fourth ray. So I'm doing a proper uh, elastic collision billiard uh, trajectory where each segment is reflecting locally and symmetrically about the normal. Now, what happens if I uh, display more than 10 segments? I display, for example, 160 segments. I get these really interesting patterns uh, where the trajectory doesn't seem to close. So I can choose the, uh, the first ray in this trajectory, right? The first ray, just recalling that the first ray is always uh, chosen uh, uh, starting at M and in the, direction of, in the direction of a chosen P on the, on the boundary. So I can place P anywhere, right? And I can choose that first ray. I can also vary M, right? And I get this kind of a phenomenon. Now, what this simulation allows me to do is to draw as many rays as needed. So, for example, if I draw 160, and then when you start taking these rays to a large number, such as 640, you start seeing that these trajectories are not necessarily closed, they are space filling, they have some structure. So in order to see what the structure looks like, I will perhaps choose 320 rays and just vary P. And we can see here that when M is actually near the center of, its, of the sector it lies on, for example, let's place M right here, uh, actually at minus 60, it's gonna be smack in the center of this particular sector. You get this structure and of course, as P approaches the center of each sector, each sector or its own sector as well. For example, if I place this guy at 180, uh, at this trivial location here, I'm gonna get a closed trajectory that is exactly like a triangle. Now, as P deviates from being the center of its sector, right, this, uh, this triangle uh, degenerates a bit until it sort of becomes this other thing here, right? And then you get these bands. I believe these bands are closed which is kind of an interesting thing. I'm sweeping a restricted area of space. So if I take this all the way to 1280, for example, rays, you can see here that I don't escape this region, but uh, it's space filling within that region, okay? Now, of course, if I make P escape a particular location, then you get into another regime, right? There's a regime that is here, and then as P becomes more eccentric with respect to the center of that sector, I go into this other regime, right? So if uh, it's, I believe it's still space filling. You see, it's still space filling when P is over here, but you get into this other regime of uh, beautiful shapes. Now, I have found for some locations of P, and if I fine tune this thing very uh, carefully, I have found that there's, for example, let's place M at 30, and I'm gonna vary P now. I have found that there's some uh, some combinations such as this that look pretty close to to being closed. Let's see here. So here's a trajectory. Let's place it at yeah. So I'm slowly changing my value of p until these segments become thin, repeated segments. And I do this visually. You see, I'm getting close to this value right here they become rather thin and I don't know I'm uh, I'm still I still need to check this but if I draw uh, this this billiard trajectory with M over here the first ray down to this P at minus 48.3 so I'm actually parameterizing positions from 0 to 360 0 to 2 pi so M is at 30 degrees 
with respect to O, so the angle, you know, with respect to horizontal on M is 30 degrees, and now P of T is at minus 48 degrees with respect to horizontal. If I draw a full 1280 segments here, I can see these lines thickening a bit, but I cannot further adjust them so that they become say at 48.5 they become as thin as they can get so i wonder if i'm pretty close to a stable trajectory or not but uh, this uh, has been also a surprising result so going back to 10 rays right i i can place p anywhere uh and find a trajectory there's another sort of uh category of trajectories which happens when m is close to a vertex so if I draw more of these guys here, let's draw 160. And if I place, I believe if P and M are, maybe they're on the same, yeah, there you go, this one over here. So there's this uh, other family. Let's move M a bit and let's see if I can make them be, yeah, I go through some singularities there uh, where I think a ray is hitting one of the corners and I get instability. But when I'm not hitting one of the corners, I can get this kind of a family of curves. Uh, if I move P around, I can see if I can find something that is stable. Doesn't look like there is one, but I get these two crossings, right? So this is, I would say, a different family, a different regime. Uh, as I move P around, I can cross over to this other regime. There's this regime over here where I have this shadow of a triangle. If I increase the number of rays, you can see it better, right? So there's some gathering. Uh, some strange attractor happening uh, at the shadows of this triangle. And of course, if I move M out of that way, I go back to other regimes of motion. These are self-crossing. So there's there's a change in regimes from this uh, sort of compact band to when that center triangle, as you saw, there's a center triangle here. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, where's that center triangle? I believe it was there. Uh, see here no I think I was moving M that's that's what it is so if I move M such a way that I can show that center triangle right there's a center triangle here then I get into this other regime and if I cross over there it is I've crossed over right so I've crossed over so now that center triangle is gone but if M is in a location such that I get the center triangle which is this this sort of regime here there's an sort of uninvaded middle area here I get this other regime. So I guess there is there's some analysis that can be made here. Uh, there's all these other regimes. Of course, you know, if I move M around, there's some symmetry, right, with respect to the center of that sector. And if I move P around, I can also break that symmetry and uh, go into other regimes but it looks like these regimes are innumerable anyway so this was a demonstration of uh, the antipodal curve and billiard trajectories on the Rouleau triangle thank you very much